Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome back to the channel. If you're a long time viewer and if you're new, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be doing something very special as I have been meaning to review Rob Hayes's last two books in the War Eternal series. I thought I would do these video versions of some older reviews, namely of the three books that make up for the first trilogy in The War Eternal. Rob Hayes is one of my favourite fantasy authors, certainly a wonderful, excellent author of green dark stories which have stayed with me, and I thought to myself, why the hell not give him whatever small platform I have? I know, it's next to nothing, but I love these books, and I'm never gonna shut up talking about them. So what better way to do it than on here, YouTube. Without further ado, let me jump into it and say that what Rob Hayes did with Along the Razor's Edge back in 2020 cemented his place as one of the masters of grimdark fantasy, if that was ever even in doubt. This book is the first of the ambitious five book series that The War Eternal has come to be by the end of 2022. I am, of course, recording this in 2023, but that's besides the point. Rob released this, along with its first two sequels, over several short months back in 2020, starting on March 31st, just a little over a month as of the time of the original writing of this review. There's plenty I wanted to say back then, and I began thus. As soon as I was finished with Razor's Edge, I was desperate for more. Perhaps this doesn't sound like great praise to you, but keep in mind, only a few fantasy authors in my adulthood have awoken in me the desire to dive into their fictional worlds without so much as a breath of something different in between. Writers like Brandon Sanderson, Joe Abercrombie, Brian McClellan, Steven Erickson... Adrian Tchaikovsky, Arkady Martin. Although, admittedly, with that last one, it was very difficult to get the second book because she'd only released the first one. Anyway, distractions. <laughs> no one escapes the pit. At just 15, Eskara Helzine fought in the greatest war mankind has ever known fought and lost. There is only one place her enemies would send a sorcerer as powerful as her, the pit, a prison sunk so deep into the earth the sun is a distant memory. Now she finds herself stripped of her magic, a young girl surrounded by thieves, murderers and worse. In order to survive she will need to find new allies, play the inmates against each other and find a way out. Her enemies will soon find... Eskara is not so easily broken. Indeed, Eskara Helzine is a sorcerer of great potential, capable of holding up to five sorcery stones in her stomach. At any one time, she serves as a deadly trump card for the Orion Empire and a fierce combatant against their Terrellan foes. Or she did, anyway, before the side she fought the war on lost. Now, Eskara is a captive, one of thousands of the foes of the victorious Terrellans, stuck in the pit, a hole in the ground in which the prisoners are forced into performing the Sisyphean labours every day of their miserable existence, digging rocks, dragging them out and then digging yet more rocks. Maybe it was just punishment, I quote here, never-ending, pointless toll down in the dark. The sure, unwavering knowledge that nothing we did or said meant a damned thing. A punishment worse than death. Irrelevance. The pit is made to break people. Not just physically, but psychologically shatter them as well. But Eskara will not be broken. Despite betrayal by her closest friend and her beatings at the hands of a sadistic foreman at the opening of Fraser's Edge, despite the lack of food and rest and even sunlight, 
This 15-year-old girl refuses to surrender. She draws strength from the daily cruelties perpetrated against her, turns all of it into smoldering fury. An all-consuming rage is perhaps one of the most surefire mechanisms of survival, and it serves Eskara well, but like the sauce inside her belly, it too is poisonous the longer she carries it inside. Do not mistake this for flat characterization, however. Though Eskara is dominated by fury and pride, her emotions go further. It's the inability to express them that speaks of a character deeply scarred and emotionally curbed from childhood. What she uses as a crutch is her power. Quote, I wouldn't trade my magic for all the meals and sleep in the world. I love the power far too much. Unquote. Eskara defines herself through her sorcery, even in the pit. The strongest element in Heiser's work has to do with character voice. The narrator is none other than Eskara herself, but an older, world-weary Eskara, one for whom the pit is in the far-off past, though it's obvious through her narrative that it's a gangrenous wound that this older sorcerer has not wholly escaped from. Foreshadowing... Done right can add so much to a work of fiction. Rob does it right, as well as Gene Wolfe did it in the genre-defining... or genre-defying? Book of the New Sun. So these are two very different stories. They share strands of DNA, not in voice alone, but also in the primal fear of deep, dark places far underneath the surface they both seize. They share two well-crafted prose... Every word fitting into the greater whole, like pieces of a puzzle. So often I come across self-published fantasy works whose occasional smattering of modern parlance comes across as a staggering discrepancy. Indeed, I recall even the first of the author's books I read, City of Kings, had the occasional incongruity in this way. Not so with Along the Razor's Edge or any of its sequels. Another strong element of this title is the magical system, a cool imaginative twist on the schools of magic you might be familiar with. The magic in this world is internally consistent, and what I'd call hard magic if we were to use Brandon Sanderson's understandings, anyway. It's powered by soul stones in side the sorcerer's belly, which means that any sorcerer has to swallow these pieces of, well, fossilized magical essence. There's plenty more to this system than what you will see in Along the Razor's Edge. The discoveries made along the way are nothing short of fascinating. I think it's one of my all-time favorite yeah, it is one of my all-time favorite magical systems in fantasy. Not a stretch to say so. Anyway, you will find a lot more out when it comes to that magic system as you read. But I will move on now. Because I would be remiss not to mention the cast of characters. Though I don't intend on calling each one out, I have to commend Rob for his handling of the dynamics between Eskara and her fellow sorcerer, Joseph. Few in the pit are what you might call nice people, and Eskara is nowhere near as good at making friends as she is at making enemies. But a few allies are nonetheless in the cards for her, and the intricacies of their relationships intertwine make for an additional layer of human drama. And that's only in the first novel, before we so much as grasp the complexity of the bonds that we see interwoven here in the future. The novel is an intelligent work about the costs of perseverance fueled by the basest human emotions. As thrilling as this first chapter in Eskara's life is, it offers caution too. So anger keeps her alive, and that's no great spoiler, as the older Eskara's narration makes immediately evident. The urge to lash out at those around her costs our protagonist immeasurably much. 
Shall I tell you of the cover art? Felix Ortiz continues to outdo himself with every follow-up in this series. And if you don't believe me, well, best you check the cover art of the next book in this series, The Lessons Never Learned. In the end, I was excited. Excited to see the world outside the pit. Excited to see Rob follow up on what was one of the best examples of foreshadowing I had come across since Gene Wolfe's The Book of the New Sun. Excited for more of Eskara above all else. Even now, having finished the series, I can tell you, as a matter of fact, this excitement has not gone away. It was one of my favourite openings of 2020. The fact that Maura Quirk, the narrator of one of my favourite series, The Locked Tomb by Temsin Moi, also narrates this audiobook. Well, it made me return to Eskara last year with a great deal of excitement as I was preparing to jump into Sins of the Mother and Death's Beating Heart, the fourth and fifth books of the series. What constitutes a sort of duology to the trilogy that begins with the lessons never learned. Pardon, with along the razor's edge. The lessons never learned is the second one and I have sadly misplaced from memory the title of the third book. I will remember it soon enough. If you'd like to learn more about that one, more about the second book, more about this entire series, The War is Hell, keep a watchful eye on this space. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends, like it, don't forget to subscribe. Huh? Why the hell not? And uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!